Okay. So I think we're ready to start. This is our portals really dead. That's the talk for the day. So we'll have a moment, start with a moment of silence for all our dead portals, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. No, it's really not about that. But that's the discussion we'd like to have today. My name is Tom Freestone, and this is Peter Sensible from BYU. And uh, we recently at BYU decided to um, um, do a little bit of a self-survey, time to like reevaluate our portal strategy and look at our business process and, and understand. So that's what the, the point of this talk is, is are portals really dead and do they really actually matter? And uh, if you see by the Mark Twain quote, obviously not. They're really good. So to start, I had an experience <laughs> um, with a friend um, who was a JSR 286 um, developer and he was working on a, a big huge company and they bought a big humongous portal some years ago and I was talking to him about it and he says oh yeah you know we have this thing it's called the personal aggregation search tool and I was like what exactly is that and he explains he goes yeah we, we develop these things like with the standard and you know the, the user can customize and personalize it and I said oh you mean like a portal no 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 not like a portal it's a personal aggregation and search tool and I said well why don't you just call it by the name and like oh with our management Portal, enterprise portal is kind of like a square word. And when you think about it, you know, probably you guys have seen this quote by Bill Lindley. He's the, the CTO of Kinetex. And he basically pr proclaimed portals as dead. He said, quote in his blog, they're things of the past. Okay, even the mighty Google has shut down iGoogle. You look at it. And you say, well, what's going on here? And then um, you have other people saying, you know what, the only reason your portal is actually of any relevance is because you have to use it. And then some of these myths that you keep hearing is, you know, they can't be relevant because we don't get free, lunch, free lunches anymore from all the vendors and stuff. So the question is, with all that sort of negativity, and not, this talk isn't supposed to be Johnny Raincloud and say, oh, why are we all here doing quarrels, is the fact that, you know what, they're actually right when you think about it. You might say, well, why are you saying that? The reason they're right is because the enterprise portal, as we think of it, the back in the day portal, has actually changed. They're no longer the same thing. The definition of portal, what most people think of in their mind as the portal, is actually changed. And so when you think about it, what actually is the portal? Do we really want to go back to that? You know, at BYU, we used to have one we called it Route Y. And it was basically death by links. We had a page with gazillions of links. Maybe you guys had one of these before. It had links and more links and links and more. It was like the bookmarks on steroids. And when you look at that, I'm like, you know, you're right. Actually, portals are dead. If it's going back to that, I just assume it'd be dead too. So that's really what it is. So the question we really have to ask ourselves is, what exactly is our portal? What exactly are we trying to do with that? And um, at BYU, we have um, uh, basically a forum in which we allow our students to uh, give us feedback and so forth. And what I actually did, we record ours, and this was unsolicited, so I'll kind of set up this video clip we have here. Um, hopefully it'll work. Is these are basically students who are asked them, you know, what's your basically your biggest stress on campus? What, what can we do about it? And when they refer to my view, that's our U4 implementation. So let's listen to this, what he, what he says basically he wants. That my BYU is supposed to be that centralized website that we all head to first. And it's the one with the, the link is on the top of the BYU homepage. But as I've, as I've talked to other students, I think one of the things we found is that maybe that isn't as central as it could be, and maybe there are different functionalities that could be added to make it that way. Be a kind of a week at a glance, seeing your whole learning suite, um, kind of what's going on in learning suite for you that week would be very helpful, as well as seeing other important information, maybe this calendar we're talking about. Uh, I just think being able to take the information that's available to us and to put it in a form that's most comfortable for us is something that could be really helpful. Kind of like what we've talked about with the week at a glance, uh, putting everything that's, that's familiar to us, uh, and really trying to kind of simplify the process of, of what's the information that is out there. Because again, I think that's the problem, is there's a lot of information out there. We go to three or four different sites for a single class, uh, and there's just a lot to remember and a lot to keep track of when we've got so much going on. And I think having all of that under the umbrella of my BYU or Learning Suite and being able to take that information and use it how we want to is something that could be really beneficial to students. So let's, let's talk about what this guy just said. This was an unsolicited thing from our forum. And when you think about our universities, um, back in the day, like when my parents went to school, do you remember the way they registered? They basically had a bunch of cars, and they'd go down to the gym, and they basically had to stand in line. And they basically sign up for the classes. They punch the little card. 
go out to some people in the audience, hopefully you didn't have to do this. Um, and then they have to walk to another building and get it approved. They had to walk to like five different places on campus to actually register for the classes. This is like a two-day thing that happened. Like this is, was like in the 60s and 70s they did this. And the problem is when we went digital, it actually really never changed. We actually have all these silos around campus, right? You have your registrar's office that has your registration system. You have like your HR payroll system. You have your learning suite. You have your LMS stuff. You have your homepage done by the communication office. And you have all these great silos that basically you have to know about if you come to the university. And if you're like the person on the outside looking at it, it looks like this. You're, you, we basically superimpose our business processes onto our student and faculty. So when you come to the university and all you do is want to register for class, you got to go to like this site and you got to go to that site and you got to do all these other things. And you're just like looking at this maze of wires. And you're like, what, what am I doing? And so basically the student was saying, in short, we just like some way to navigate this. And so what do we do? Hence the portal. And the best part of this whole picture is the world's even changing even better. Not only do they want to like see this, they actually want to bring their own device and see it their own special way. So you know, back in the day it was just, oh, we had browsers and you had like count on one hand how many browsers you had to do. And then now there's these like iPhones and smart devices. And then you look at it now, we have Google Glasses, you have all these different things. So they actually want to interact with all these silos, all these things on campus is using all their little fandangle devices. And you know, the box here on the left just keeps getting bigger and bigger. How do you do that? How do you manage that kind of complexity? And that's that's really what the portal is all about, is, is basically trying to figure out how to manage that. So what actually the portal? And be completely buzzword compliant, I brought a Gartner definition for us. It's a portal is a personalized single point of access to wealth and information processing people. So this would be buzzword compliant. Let's just say it in short words. They basically want to see the university their way. They want to be able to see it with their own devices. They want to be able to, to view the world in which they're there. So let's put that kind of in context. If I'm a student, I want to see the relevant things to get me in, register for my classes, so I can go on the business of learning and getting a higher education. If I'm a faculty member, I want to see those things around the university, like my paycheck, my you know, grade submission, and so forth, in the way in which I want to see it, so I can get on and do the teaching and research. So basically, I just want to see our university information their way with their device. That's really what the portal is all about. So how do we solve that problem? It's really pretty simple. There's there's three choices we have to make. We can either buy one, which is basically we go find a, a big company, they're always wanting to sell us something and buy one from them. The second thing we just go alone. We basically say we have smart developers, we're gonna go in from their own portal. We're just gonna do our own thing and, and do that. Or we can go the open source route. And when you look at these, you might say to yourself, well, how do you decide? This is always kind of a bit of a trade-off. Is how do you decide? Should I just go with the commercial thing, no one ever gets filed, fired for going Oracle? Should I write my own or do this? And the answer is chocolate. You might think that's kind of weird, but you never go wrong with chocolate. And you might ask, what does that have to do with anything? Is chocolate. And just sort of a little bit of a side story, some of my neighbors actually own a chocolate shop in Salt Lake. Some of the best chocolate. So if you're ever in Salt Lake, feel free to stop by Hatch's Chocolate. And I had the opportunity to tour their their operation. And they make chocolate. They have all the chocolate making equipment there. You know, they're you see them mixing it up and they have the coals and they freeze it and so forth. And when you get there and done, you can get a box of chocolates. And I thought to myself, well, how in the world did you get a box of chocolates? I saw you make chocolates, but where was the box maker that made the box for that? And so here's the kind of lesson here you think about it is is it chocolate or the box? Obviously, to get the box, they just go there. They said some vendor get the box because that's not really what they do in life. They make chocolates. They don't make boxes. So the decision on your portal is really pretty simple. Is is it the chocolate or is it the box? Right? You can go to a commercial vendor and buy a portal or even download some other portals. And sure enough, they're pretty fine portals. But are they the box for you? Right? Are they the thing that an education institution wants? Um, as we went through our, our looking through the different portals, you look at it and say, yeah, they have 150 portlets, but like 50 of them are like sales portlets. And I'm like, well, we're not really selling anything. So that's not really, really, I mean, sure you have a lot of them, but that's not useful to us. So you really have to evaluate that for yourself and understand what your mission is as, as a university is to teach students. And so it becomes pretty simple to identify what the chocolate is in your organization, what it is you want to focus on. And so what is the value we're at? You know, if we go the open source route, it's basically 
this is the community. It's all you guys here in the room. When you think about it, what does the community bring? What's, what's that bringing? Well, you get the best of both worlds. You know, when you go it alone, you go it alone. So for good or bad or worse, it's all you're in control. But the problem is you're really alone. So when push comes to shove and you have to find something, what do you do? So if you go to the other extreme and, and buy a commercial, you have this big monolithic company behind you. They're backing you. And you kind of follow the business suite. So open source really actually gives us the opportunity to do both. Right? We have a humongous community. We have all these people to bounce ideas off and so forth. So really an investment in U portal is in the community. A lot of people ask us, you know, what do you get when you come to the U portal stuff? It's really a community is what you're getting. You're getting support, plus you're getting all the great ideas mm -hmm. and all the networking that you have here. So that's really kind of one of the hard things when you try to articulate a business case is because usually you know, the management ties the people that write the check and say, well, what's the ROI on, on your investment in the portal? And you're like, well, it's free. But really, in reality, it's not particularly free. It's in terms of time, in terms of developer effort that you need to, to contribute to that, to making the new portal better. And the nice thing about really new portal, where, where the actual value is, is the fact that we're all education institutions. We, we all do class registrations. We know about admitting freshmen, and we know about how that works. And so you're getting a whole lot of value out of that investment. So think of it sort of like this way. This is kind of a little picture of my BYU. And I kind of just put a bunch of things on here where we got basically content from the community. And we think about it, you know, here we have, here's the maps portlet, here's, you know, the registration portlet. There's only so many ways you can register for classes, like a grid view, and there's like a list view, and so forth. So how, how do you want to reinvent the wheel when you do that? That's, that's really kind of, when you think about it, the great investment you're getting is you, for very little on your part, you can actually do that. So that's kind of the, the story we're trying to present when we were giving the My BYU story to kind of reinvent our story in our business case. Because sometimes most of us are technical people, and technically the, the value of U-Portal and so forth are there. The hard part is to get the check written to, to continue with that investment. That's kind of what we're working on that. Um, I'm going to turn the mic over to Peter. He's going to kind of go through a little bit more of our case study and kind of work through things and, and that. So, Peter. I'm going to start off by uh, kind of drilling down on the purpose or definition of a portal a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of walk us through uh, my BYU or BYU's implementation of a portal, uh, see how we did and then talk about some of the challenges that we've had that we're experiencing. Um, so there's really three primary purposes for a portal. Uh, Tom gave the definition that therefore uh, they're a personal, per, uh, allow personalization and target single destination to interact with information processes and to collaborate. So that's kind of a standard simple de definition. But they're also a means by which um, the organization can push information to individuals. Uh, they can use the portal as a tool to, to direct information to, to certain um, audience or consumers. And it's also, uh, portals are often uh, a tool for IT organizations to allow them, to give them a kind of a unified platform to deliver applications and services to, to their users as well. So it's kind of a threefold purpose uh, for portals. Um, I'm showing on the slide here a number of functions or key features within a portal that the ideal portal should include, um, such as search and navigation. So a lot of the uh, features of a portal or the content within a portal is about searching and navigating content, searching and navigating the things that I care about the most. And in some cases, our portals have multiple ways to do that, uh, and it's, it's important to make that search, search and navigation as simple as possible. Portals are obviously about aggregation of content. Um, they're about content discovery, kind of the App Store model, where, where the organization is allowed to, is able to find all of the content that is relevant to their, to their personal individual needs. Um, they're also about integration of, of systems throughout the organization. Um, they're about user productivity, collaboration, having the tools in front of you to, to be productive as, as an individual uh, within the organization. Uh, obviously, personalization, obviously, identity and access. Um, in the end, portals are about the user experience um, and, and making, sure, making sure that that user experience is optimal. 
So let's talk about MyBYU for a second. Um, give you a brief history. So Tom mentioned Route Y. It was a, is an old uh, single web page that uh, users authenticated into and had uh, a series of links on that page that they could navigate single sign-on to a lot of applications or web assets at the university. And it also included um, some push notifications. So in 2009, uh, we released our first version of uPortal, uh, which was just a basic replacement of that. It didn't have very many portlets. About a year later, uh, we improved it greatly, um, had a lot more content, uh, portal content, and we turned off that old Route Y tool. Uh, and then just recently, we, we released MyBYU version 3.0, which was built on uPortal 4X. Um, and, uh, it has a lot more content and it's a lot richer experience and something we're quite proud of. Um, so in terms of analytics, um, the portal is used pretty heavily on campus um, based on the number of visits. Um, MyBYU is, is basically the second most visited site on campus. Um, we've received a lot of good feedback from our users uh, in, about, in about two and a half years of, of of using uPortal. Uh, we've gotten about 20,000 pieces of, of feedback, and many of those with really good comments. And we've incorporated many of those comments within our current version of, of, of MyBYU. Um, my new portal has been extremely reliable uh, for us. Um, we've had, we had two outages about almost two years ago. Since then, it's been extremely safe, stable. Um, and uh, that's been going well. So we also, our, our implementation, we allow full customization. So we don't lock anything down in our portal environment. Uh, we'll we give users pretty much a clean slate and let, let them customize and add whatever content that they feel is relevant. Um, they can change, you know, add portlets, of course, and change tab, add tabs, change themes or skins uh, to their heart's content. Um, we're, in the most recent deployment, we've, uh, we're utilizing the pre-built tab uh, feature quite heavily now, and, and we're going to build out on that even more to allow people to uh, grab that pre-packaged content. Um, we have we traditionally used multiple themes, um, and uh, in our really most recent release, we went down to a single theme, and we're using that kind of as a template to build out um, more themes again to kind of simplify by that deployment process uh, of theme. And so uh, that, that's something that we'll, we're working on pretty heavily. Um, we have about two, a little over 200 uh, portlets available. Um, we focus throughout our uh, all three implementations on usability and design. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, requirements gathering and use cases and usability studies, uh, usability testing. Um, we've had some, done some card sorting exercises, some surveys, we've used analytics as much as possible to really try to uh, focus on, on a good user experience uh, for campus. Um, so that's been, been a, a primary focus. At BYU, we encourage um, campus participation in corporate development. So Tom and I are from the central IT shop. And uh, there's a number of IT shops around campus that that uh, that are for for departmental needs, and uh, we work with them on a regular basis to try to encourage them to uh, create portal content. We've we've created kind of governance around that uh, so that there's uh, some common design practices. Um, we've got a, a good bit of uh, documentation for developers. We've got a uh, Portlet registration process, where when they've got create content created, uh, they can document that, register that, and that gets it into the portal environment, allows them to test it, and then it's eventually deployed uh, to, to campus when it's ready. Um, and then we've tried to really uh, document our APIs and, and allow for really good integration into existing portal content um, and, and other applications on campus. Um, my BYU has had a, a pretty strong SOA initiative in, in developing web services over the past several years, and uh, 
something that we're working on is, is building lots of good web services to uh, allow campus to integrate and create, create applications and, and, and portraits. Um, but the primary focus is that anyone can participate. We don't, we don't exclude anybody on campus from uh, creating portlet content. We just kind of have that governance uh, process around it and allow them to create that comp content and, and add value to the portal as they see fit. Obviously, we have our mobile web version of uh, MyBYU, and uh, we are looking at um, at U Mobile implementation at a, a future date. Uh, BYU does have a uh, native app that they've homegrown uh, that is in somewhat in competition to the, the MyBYU in terms of uh, what their strategy is and. and what their focus is uh, in delivering content to the university. Uh, so I'll come back to that conversation in just a minute. Um, we have a lot of good help, resources, videos, etc., uh, knowledge base articles, and FAQs, documentation. Um, challenges. So some of the challenges at, at BYU with uh, with our portal implementation is um, is, for example. Uh, we have some. We still have some missing key content. So there's, you know, if you look at the top 20 or top 50 uh, needed portlets for for a good user experience, uh, there's a portion of those that we still still do not have uh, in production uh, for various reasons. Don't have, we don't have web services, or uh, it's not a priority among uh, those campus IT shops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there is definitely some key content that is missing. We have resource constraints, of course. You know, all organizations, especially universities, experience that. Um, and uh, that, that is a challenge at BYU as well. But it, it's uh, also partially uh, extending to campus and, and getting them to make it a priority is a challenge as well, getting them to focus on that Portland development. Uh, marketing and promotion. Um, so Tom alluded to you know some of the uh, cultural issues around portals, um, in in that they're not always seen in in a great light. They're they're not understood, or they're not the strategy is not no, known throughout the organization equally. Uh, and so, for one reason or another, uh, people don't necessarily promote or or recommend a portal strategy um, like we do. And so, we work against that at, at the university a little bit as well. Um, we, uh, social media integration is another focus. Um, we would like to improve our, our portal implementation a great deal with, uh, with much better social media integration, allowing uh, students to be more social uh, within the portal environment, but also to help promote the portal itself, uh, to help promote my BYU amongst the organization. Um, and. Uh, I think that, that focuses on that. So um, I wanted to kind of drop back into something Tom mentioned. Um, in, in recent months, we've because of the competing strategy um, between the BYU mobile app, the native app, and my BYU in its direction with mobile, uh, because those are competing strategies, we've kind of stepped back as an organization recently and kind of re started to reevaluate where do we really want to go. We started off with a kind of an as-is experience. What are those environments like? What are they focused on? What are their strategies, their roadmaps long-term? Um, and then even we stepped even further back and said, what, what, is, what are the requirements for an optimal user experience, uh, regardless of the technologies that are, that are implemented? What, what do we want campus to enjoy in terms of a portal mobile strategy? Um, then we, we looked, we kind of revisited the architecture of, of that best case scenario. Um, what are some of the tools or technologies that are uh, important? Um, and then we evaluated where are our gaps as an organization? What are we missing? Where are we, what are the things we ought to focus on as an organization to improve that, that overall user experience? Uh, and we are now actually kind of, kind of wrapping that up and, and uh, defining refining and defining that final roadmap that, that we'll present to 
uh, OIT management and BYU management. Um, but we're kind of in the middle of that strategy review, and it's, it's, it's been enlightening and, and helpful to talk through it. So the portal uh, technologies <coughs> kind of started in 1998. Um, it's now very mature. Um, the uh, market is expanding. Um, it's, uh, it's driven by a lot of open source and cloud uh, portal uh, companies, vendors. Um, but it is, as Tom, Tom mentioned, it's transforming. Um, it's changing. Uh, the, the devices that we develop to are, are improving, are growing. Um, the demand for a portal is, is actually accelerating. Um, it's, it's not dying at all. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, it is about user experience. It's about delivering the optimal user experience for, for our, our customers. Um, so with that, um, are there any questions, comments? Can you clarify which groups? So obviously you're, you've got the U portal implementation. What group in, was it in Central IT? Was it in the University Communications Office that had the other mobile app? It was an, it was an actual Central IT group that was uh, creating that app as well. So it was within the same organization and still with competing strategies? That's correct. Right. You mentioned a point about uh, portal as a, so it is a term to consume your business users, functional users, or other types of only technology people kind of seek to articulate with the portal as a word. But really, the, but the, most of the business groups, you know, there needs to be some other term that people come up with that kind of articulates that it is uh, about them, that it solves some of the Challenges and the problems in the communication, the collaboration, those type of elements that are typically solved by a portal. So, have you given thought to what is the alternate term that should be used with the business users as opposed to the IT we are talking about? I'll say that, that's kind of the eight million dollar question. And some some ways in which we've kind of done it is uh, with our product branding. Actually, if you were to look at it, it's beautiful. It was my way, my way. So we kind of actually said, okay, we'll just name the you know, the MyUA product line that way. But you're right. There, I don't think there is. I don't really. What was the name they were saying? The user experience, whatever tool. Yeah, I mean, we could try to make one up, but I mean, it is a portal. It is what it is. Sort of an aggregator personalization engine. So I don't know if there is really a good word that you can see your way from that. Do you have any thoughts? But. Well, I, I recently attended the Gartner PCC, the Portals Collaboration and Content Management Conference. And it was interesting to watch uh, all the participants, the presenters, um, kind of shy away from the word portal. Um, as a group, they were kind of leaning towards, and a lot of the vendors are leaning towards the term user experience platform. Um, and uh, and so you don't, you, even in that conference, you didn't hear the term portal as much as, as you used to. So I, I don't know if user experience platform is going to catch on as the term, but um, it seems to be a good focus, at least. It seems to have a good foundational con you know, concepts that that is what we focus on. So, so just to make a uh, more observation, like, uh, I, I went into a different market space where it is totally it's even less known than, than in the US. And, and uh, I had a very hard time explaining uh, what portal was to an institutional academician, what that portal was. And, and so it's, I kind of understand the challenge. I kind of have a response on that. I think one way to kind of think about it is sort of like Google now, except for you know, campus experience, where we have all this information about users, and we can and, and should be tweaking the user experience as much as possible to make it easy for you to find and improve student success and all that. And I think also just technically and culturally, like part. You, you can take a content management system and make it portal-like, but at least within our campus, we use Drupal, and Drupal, we, we would have to spend a lot of effort, a lot of training, completely change the way we do things, and we could to make Drupal capable of being a platform 
that the portal already is. And so I think just in the way that we develop on the portal, it's much easier to check the role that the user has or check some data and integrate with the databases that we have and make decisions and change the user experience. Yeah, there, there are a couple different flavors of portals, right? There's the horizontal portal and there's the vertical portal. So the vertical portals um, have needs in, in, in their spaces. So in some cases, the department might, will need a vertical portal of some sort, and, and they, they do that in various ways. They certainly can use U portal to do that, um, and some do. Um, but we're, we're specifically focused on the horizontal portal. That's the holistic experience across across the whole organization. And it tries to draw all of those vertical portals together into a single, single domain. Good comments. Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask us.